Welcome back to the channel everybody. Now that we have the flywheel on the engine, we can set the injection pump lifter timing. Pretty straightforward process and I'll walk you through what the procedure is, but in a nutshell, you take a depth gauge on top of the pump, measure down to the lifter yoke, and when your pointer and flywheel timing marks register to the proper compression stroke of the proper cylinder, you want to see 1.741 inches down from the top of that pump into that lifter yoke. Pretty straightforward. That measurement of 1.741 inches at top dead center of that cylinder will put your injection timing at 24 degrees before top dead center. That's when the injection event will begin and that ensures that with the mechanical static setting of everything you're going to get proper engine performance, proper fuel delivery and timing. Now, because I still have the cylinder head off this engine, I have the added benefit of being able to use a dial indicator to verify true top dead center on the piston and reference it with my timing marks that are on the flywheel just to make sure that they are in fact correct. Now, I've already set the lifter for number one cylinder, but I'll walk you through the process right here to show you how I got there. So first, using the dial indicator positioned above number one piston, I will rotate the engine in its normal direction when it's running. We'll just slowly bring the piston up until it contacts. There we go. We watch the needle. We run it up to top dead center. Right there. I will then verify my timing mark on the flywheel and we are top center on cylinder one compression stroke right now and it looks like bottom of pointer is in register with timing mark on the flywheel. And it is at this point that we can use the depth mic on top of the pump housing to measure down into the lifter yoke. And this is where you want to thread the yoke and jam nut up or down and then lock it in to get your set adjustment. And this is where you want your 1.741. So we'll zero it out. That's 1.7 depth right there. So we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 41. Repeat that process on the other three in firing order sequence, which is one, three, four, and then two. Setting up for number three now, we are on the compression stroke. So we will come up against the dial indicator and we will follow the needle until we find top dead center. Now, it's very important that you do not overrun top dead center and then reverse it to get back there again. If you happen to go past top dead center, the manual states that you want to reverse direction of the engine at least 60 degrees and then in normal direction of engine rotation, come up on it again. That ensures that as you position your timing mark and position your uh, piston to top dead center that you are on the drive side of the timing gear teeth that are behind that front cover. Because if you would overrun, there we go, if you would overrun top dead center and then reverse it just a few degrees to get back, your injection timing is, is going to be off by however much backlash there is in those timing gear teeth. Hopefully that makes sense. That's the best way I can describe it. And again, we verify that our pointer is in register with the top center two and three mark. Now we'll check the depth of number three yoke. And looking at it, I can tell it's gonna be a little bit high. So we'll just run this down, see what we have. There's 1.650, 55, 60. Looks like we're 1.663, so we're high. So what I'm gonna to have to do Take the wrenches in there, I'll loosen the jam nut, and then I'll go and uh, turn the yoke down in. And we'll do a few periodic measurements. By threading the yoke in, that's going to increase the depth on that uh, uh, reading. And we'll check it from time to time and eventually zero in on our 1.741 and lock it down with the jam nut. This is where it's really nice that those lifters keep themselves from turning. I like how uh, tight the threads are in these new lifters too. 
these yolks are almost a, uh, a friction fit in here. Do another check, see where we are. 705, so we need to go, oh, we need to go a ways yet. Okay, I was happy with the measurement, but then I tightened the gem nut, and usually that gem nut makes that lifter yoke rise just a little bit. So we'll do another check here real quick. 35, yeah, see we were at 1.741, we're 1.738 right now. So cinching that gem nut does lift that lifter just a little bit. So I'll loosen that back up, I'll compensate for it, tighten it back down, and then try and get right to our 741 with everything tight. All right, tweaked it just a little bit. We will check 1.741 right on. Very happy with that. So you've seen every step of the process. I just need to complete it on uh, cylinder four and then cylinder two, and we'll have all these where they need to be. All right, so with everything set in here for lifter height, we can start closing this area off so that straight toothed quadrant rack can go in to, there we go, align it with the rack rod. I have just a very light coating of grease on all the sliding uh, contact surfaces. Just don't want that to be dry. Again, it's retained by these, um, these two little quarter inch bolts with these little pieces of flat metal beneath them. Now I'm just finishing up the installation of the four little o-ring seals that seal the fuel inlet passages to the individual fuel pumps. 2A3307, current number on those. Alright, just about ready to install the individual fuel pumps. Uh, a couple checks to do to them first you can see in the illustration right here. They want you to take a micrometer and measure the pump plunger overall length, checking for wear on this end primarily right here. And you can see where it says uh, when testing a pump has been used for a long time, the length of plunger should be checked and the pump discarded if the plunger wear exceeds five thousandths. The length of new plungers is 2.6575 to 6.577. And we check out uh, 2.656 and then 2.657. So we are well within spec on those. Now there's not a lot I can do to test these things because it requires special testing equipment that I just don't have. Probably the best I'm going to be able to do is just put all these back on the engine and once I'm cranking things over have the injectors sticking out into the open air and just see what the spray pattern is out of each one. Really that's about as scientific as we can get with this without special tools. But I've had lots of questions about how these actually meter fuel and it all has to do with this little notch that's cut into it up at the end and then that helix, that little ramp passage channel, we can call it, that is cut into the body of the plunger. So basically the manual is gonna break it down a lot better than I ever could. So here we have just a general generic operation of how that works. So with your inlet groove all the way over here, we can call it a bypass groove really, and the helix down here, when the plunger is down towards the bottom of the barrel, fuel from your 15 PSI fuel transfer pump filter tower is gonna to come in through the inlet passage and collect not only up above the plunger, but it's also gonna fill the, the helix by this little kind of passage that comes down from the top, and it's gonna fill this whole surrounding cutout area where that helix is. So as the plunger then is moved up, the part of the body above the helix is going to close off that inlet passage so that fuel basically is pressurized around the helix around this little spill channel and above the top of the plunger and basically it has nowhere to go but up out the fuel line and basically into the injector your fuel injector is going to be like a crack off valve a relief valve at this point so when you hit i believe these are oh, in the 1500 psi region i might have to recheck that but anyway when the injector hits the calibrated cracking pressure the needle moves off the seat the fuel sprays out and basically you have your injection event so when your fuel plunger gets up to the point though that the helix cutout portion starts to uncover that inlet part 
it eventually gives that pressurized fuel a place to go. So the fuel goes back down that channel, back through the helix, and out into your filter tower where it's just absorbed and you really don't see any kind of a pressure spike because basically you just you lost any kind of minute little bit of pressure that you would have had. So um, it just kind of shows what would happen in the shutoff position. Basically your little dump channel that uh, bit gives you a path to the top is in line with your fuel inlet all the time. So as this plunger is going up and down, the fuel can kind of just travel in, out, up, down, wherever. That passage never gets covered enough to build any pressure above the plunger. But in the idling position, you can see where the narrow part of the helix, right to basically right off my fingertip, right on the uh, the very edge of that um, that channel to the top, that is just a short effective stroke because you only have a little bit of material there that covers that inlet port. So you'll build pressure for a minute amount of time until that helix cutout uncovers that port and you dump all of your fuel. Full load position, you're cranked all the way around so that the wide portion above that helix is covering your inlet passage and you have a lot longer effective stroke before this helix uncovers that inlet passage and basically cancels or shuts off your injection event. So basically, in a nutshell, the way it works, when you have a short effective pressure stroke, you get a little bit of fuel for a little bit of heat. With longer effective stroke, a lot more fuel, a lot more heat. Speeds your engine up. All right, so installation of these is pretty straightforward. Just uh, make sure they're not dry. Set them in the original spots that they came out of and basically get your plunger lined with your yoke. And I may have been a little bit premature in putting that uh, straight toothed rack in. I think it's gonna give me some problems. So we'll just pull that thing back out for a second. It's only two bolts anyway, so. See that everybody proof that not everything goes perfect on the first try all the time, right? Get that. Plunger started in the yoke, line the barrel with the dowels. And now we can put <laughs> the, the straight tooth rack back in once again, just making sure to align all of those timing marks. All right, with all of the hold down bolts and locks for the pumps tight, got that uh, straight tooth rack back in there. We'll check everything for free movement and it's all good. Okay, so the final step is to install the front cover plate for the pump. This will finally wrap up this entire sequence and put this whole injection pump and uh, governor process right to bed. <laughs>